and I, I now call on um, Deputy Roisin Shortall uh, to introduce and move the motion. Uh, I move the motion. Um, in last year's general election, health care was the number one issue of concern for the public. This was hardly surprising when you consider the huge level of unmet need in our society. Over 600,000 people on hospital waiting lists, hundreds of thousands on waiting lists for community services, such as speech and language therapy and physiotherapy, and great difficulties for many in accessing mental health services, home care and disability services. There's no doubt that the political system has failed the people in one of the most basic and essential public services, health care. Unlike most other developed countries, we in Ireland have never sought to identify the most appropriate model of health care for the Irish people. A very disjointed, inefficient and inequitable system has evolved over the years, which fails to adequately meet the needs of the people. Ireland is an outlier in terms of our two-tier health system. In no other European country are so many people denied access to services or forced into private health insurance. On the one hand, almost 40% have eligibility for free health care. This is eligibility rather than entitlement and is merely theoretical as many of the services either do not exist or are hopelessly inadequate. On the other hand, some 45 percent of the population feel they have no choice but to take out expensive uh, private health insurance rising every year, yet the level of cover provided fails to meet the cost of many essential services. All service users are faced with significant out-of-pocket expenses, which have risen significantly in recent years often to a catastrophic level where many are denied access to care. In the Irish context, the inverse care law clearly applies. Those most in need of care are least likely to receive it. This point was very strongly emphasised and graphically displayed to us on the committee by a group of GPs working in disadvantaged areas known as doctors at the deep end. Our health service is very much dominated by vested interests. Going back as far as the mother and child scheme of the 1950s, proper public health services have been blocked by those who see health care as a commodity from which to gain profits. The reality is that the weaker the public system, the more the private system benefits. And the reverse, of course, also applies. The better the public health system, the less opportunity there is for profiteering. As a result, too often attempts to reform our dysfunctional system have been stymied by those who care little about equity and who put private interests ahead of the public interest. When we hear public commentary on the health service, including some of the negative responses to this report, it's always wise to ask qui bono, or who benefits. Are these people more concerned about their own commercial interests than the public good? At a political and often official level, vested interests have held far too much sway. The ministerial approach has too often in the past been to juggle these vested interests and thereby maintain the status quo. This has happened very clearly at the expense of the patient. The interregnum last year provided an opportunity for the Dáil to take a new approach. Some 89 members signed up to a Dáil motion calling for an all-party consensus. Very shortly after that, the Minister and Government came on board, and the result was the unanimous decision of the Dáil to establish the Committee on the Future of Health Care. The Dáil motion set the terms of reference for the Committee. For the introduction of a universal single-tier service based on need rather than ability to pay. And thirdly, to reorientate the health service away from our hospital-centric model so that the vast bulk of care is provided at primary and social care level. 
Fundamental to these objectives was an acceptance that we need to stop making a political football out of health and reach a consensus on how our health service should be designed and structured in order to put the needs of patients first. From the outset, we decided that our approach would have a number of elements. We were determined that our work would be evidence-based. We said it was a priority to listen to service users and to listen to staff. We took expert advice, most notably from the Trinity Centre for Health Policy and Management, who worked very closely with us and guided us in developing our report. We learned from best practice in other countries and took advice from people like Alison Pollock and Dr Josef Figures of the OECD. We held expert-led workshops and agreed on a set of values and eight principles which would underpin our work. These eight fundamental principles are as, followed, as follows. Firstly, to create a modern, responsive, integrated public health system comparable to other European countries through building long-term public and political confidence in the delivery and implementation of this plan. All care planned and provided so that the patient is paramount ensuring appropriate care pathways and seamless transition backed up by full patient record and information. Thirdly, timely access to all health and social care according to medical need. Fourthly, care provided free at the point of delivery based entirely on clinical need. Fifthly, patients accessing care at the most appropriate cost-effective service level with a strong emphasis on prevention and public health. Sixthly, the health service workforce is appropriate, accountable, flexible, well-resourced, supported and valued. Seventhly, public money is only spent in the public interest or for the public good, ensuring value for money, integration, oversight, accountability and the correct incentives. And finally, that accountability, effective organisational alignment and good governance are central to the organisation and functioning of the health system. The areas which we prioritised became the key chapters of our report, and these are as follows. Population health profile, entitlement and access, integrated care, funding and implementation. We've called our proposal Slauncha Care. The key elements are as follows. A new general health card, Carthus Slauncha, entitling everyone to a broad range of treatments and medicines at low cost or no cost. This will reduce out-of-pocket expenses for all. Waiting time guarantees of 12 weeks for an inpatient procedure, 10 weeks for an outpatient appointment and 10 days for a diagnostic test and all of those to be underpinned by legislation. Delivery of at least 70% of people's healthcare services locally in their community, including chronic illness management, diagnostic services, and minor injury care. More investment in preventative public health and the promotion of healthy lifestyles, mental well-being, and early detection and management of chronic illness. The phased elimination of private care from public hospitals. Everyone will be entitled to access public care in public hospitals. Those who have private health insurance will still be able to purchase care from private health care providers, but there will be no subsidisation of that. Significant upfront and ongoing year-on-year -year investment rising to 2.8 billion euro over the 10-year period. A transitional fund of €3 billion Euro to support investment across the health system in areas such as infrastructure, e-health and expansion of training capacity. A Slauncha implementation office should be set up under the auspices of the Taoiseach to develop a detailed implementation plan for the reform programme. On the question of funding, we very much recognise that Ireland already spends a lot on health relative to other countries. But it's clear that the manner in which that money is being spent means that we get very poor value for money and unsatisfactory health outcomes. Our approach has been to recommend spending in order to save. 
where there will be significant saving for individuals and families in terms of out-of-pocket expenses, where the need for private health insurance will decrease, where we move to a much lower cost model of care, where this is facilitated by a full e-health programme. We urge the Government to endorse the detailed and costed approach set out by the Committee in Sláinte Care. This is not a menu of options from which to pick and choose. It is a comprehensive, integrated strategy whose elements are interrelated and interdependent. As a result, I have to say, unfortunately, that I'm concerned about the mixed messages coming from government in respect of their response. While the minister is sounding positive, the government press office seems to be briefing negatively. A report in the Irish Times on Monday went as far as to say that the minister, quote, has signalled his intention to only partially implement the future of healthcare report, and that he will tell the doll that he welcomes those elements which are consistent with government policy. I know too that there was similar negative briefing of journalists after Tuesday's Cabinet meeting. I sincerely hope that this is not what the Minister is going to say, and I hope that it doesn't represent the views of the Minister, because to do so would be to fly in the face of the hard-won political consensus on which Sláinte Care is built. I want to take this opportunity to thank all members of the committee for their engagement in this process over the past 11 months. It was demanding and time-consuming. It involved a lot of meetings and much reading between meetings. I think we were all challenged to find workable solutions. I believe that all members approach the task with an earnest desire to fulfil the remit which they have been given by the Dáil and to draft a strategy to ensure that their constituents and indeed all people in Ireland would be provided with a modern, equitable and efficient public health care system. I also want to thank the Secretariat here in the Oireachtas who provided important support and backup and who worked to challenging and tight deadlines. The committee was particularly fortunate in being able to engage the expertise of the team from the Trinity Centre for Health Policy and Management under the leadership of Dr Steve Thomas. Their wide-ranging expertise and guidance was invaluable to the work of the committee. I also want to thank the Minister for Health, the Department of Health and the HSE for their support during the process and for the data and responses which they were able to provide for the many queries which we raised with them. The Sláinte Care Plan will deliver for Ireland the sort of fair, affordable and effective public health system that we desperately need and deserve and which most of our European neighbours enjoy. This is the first time that there has ever been cross-party consensus on how to deliver a modern, universal healthcare system that meets the needs of all people based on their medical needs, not on their economic status. Sláinte Care is a realistic and achievable plan. It's about investing now in those key elements of the healthcare system in order to bring about better results and to save on funding later. It has been costed by health experts and has strong support among many patient groups and medical practitioners. What we now need is a government commitment to implement this plan in its entirety. We can't continue with our broken health system, where patients are dying on waiting lists where many people's lives are limited by the lack of availability of much-needed services, and where families are impoverished because they've had to bear the costs of services that should be available in a modern, fully developed country that should be available free of charge. Minister, this is a very historic opportunity, an opportunity to introduce a high-quality 
public health service for everyone in Ireland. We will not be forgiven if we allow this opportunity to pass. Thank you, Cahirlach.